Hello and welcome, my name is Meepless, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today is my second graphic novel TBR video, this time for January. Looking back briefly at my December TBR, things went pretty excellent and I ended up reading all my books for scheduled reviews, even the very, very long ones. And a couple extra. Plus, given some space and time, I've also thought of some improvements, so this video should be even more informative and fun. That said, constructive feedback is always welcome, especially in the pronunciation department. Starting from the top of my list of scheduled reviews, the first manga I want to talk about in January is the first two volumes of How Do We Relationship by Tamiful, a pretty popular Yuri manga published in English by Viz Media in 2020. This initial thoughts video will be part of my next A to Z of queer lit video. Quote, Shai Miwa has always dreamed of finding love, but living in small town Japan made finding the right match difficult, especially since she likes girls. Even going away to college didn't seem to help until one day her outgoing classmate, Psycho, suggests they might as well start dating each other since it's not like either of them has other options. At first it seems like things won't work out as their personalities clash and misunderstandings abound, but when their casual friendship starts to become something more, Miwa begins to wonder, can a pragmatic proposal lead to true love? End quote. On the opposite end of the spectrum, another manga I hope to read in January is A Journal of My Father by Jiro Taniguchi, published in English by Ponent Mon in 2021. Not for any reading project. I've just read and reviewed a number of Jiro Taniguchi's previous works and I find him interesting. It's certainly more of a niche appeal. Quote, the book opens with some childhood thoughts of Yoshi Yamashita spurred by a phone call at work informing him of his father's death. So he journeys back to his hometown after an absence of well over a decade, during which time he has not seen his father. But as the relatives gather for the funeral and the stories start to flow, Yaoichi's childhood starts to resurface. The spring afternoons playing on the floor of his father's barber shop, the fire that ravaged the city and his family's home, his parents' divorce, and a new mother. Through confidences and memories shared with those who knew him best, Yoichi dis rediscovers the man he had long considered an absent and rather cold father." End quote. And because of a twist of fate, we actually have room for three Manga Mondays this month, and so I will also be reading The Swamp by Yoshiharu Suge. These short stories were originally published between 1965 and 1966, but this translated collection was published in 2020 by Drawn and Quarterly. It looks interesting, and I have heard some good things about it, so I figured, why not? Quote, Yoshiharu Suge is another of the most influential and acclaimed practitioners of literary comics in Japan. The Swamp collects work from his early years, showing a major talent coming into his own, bucking the tradition of mystery and adventure stories. Suge's fiction focused on the lives of citizens of Japan. These mesmerizing comics, like those of his contemporary, Yoshihiro Tatsumi reveal a gritty, at times desperate, post-war Japan while displaying Suge's unique sense of humor and point of view." End quote. Next up, we have Borders by Thomas King, not to be confused with Tom King and Natasha Donovan, published in 2021. The short story This Is Adapting was published in 1993 as part of Thomas King's book One Good Story that one. Both are published by HarperCollins Publishers, LTD. I'm picking this book up because it looks pretty interesting and because I'm trying to read and review one graphic novel a month by Indigenous creators. Quote, on a trip to visit his older sister, who has moved away from the family home on the reserve to Salt Lake City, a young boy and his mother are posed a simple question with a not-so-simple answer. Are you Canadian? The border guard asks, or American? Then they answer, Blackfoot. And when border guards will not accept their citizenship, mother and son wind up trapped in an all too real limbo between nations that do not recognize who they are." End quote. Then I'm hoping to get my hands on Far Sector by N.K. Jemisin and Jamal Campbell. A comic from DC's Young Animal imprint, the single issues came out from 2019 to 2021. There's also part one and part two trades bind up and one complete series bind up. As an N.K. Jemisin fan who also reads superhero comics, this series has been on my TBR for a minute, but now it's the February pick for the Realm of Comics Book Club. Jumping a bit ahead, but I have read their January pick, 
Persepolis parts one and two, five stars, would recommend. So I'm trying to build in a buffer. It's also part of my Black Comics TBR. Quote, for the past six months, newly chosen Green Lantern Sojourner Joe Moline has been protecting the city enduring, a massive metropolis of 20 billion people. The city has maintained peace for over 500 years by stripping its citizens of their ability to feel. As a result, violent crime is virtually unheard of and murder is non-existent. But that's all about to change in this new maxi series that gives a DC young animal spin to the legacy of the Green Lanterns. End quote. The other Mainstream Monday title I am to read and review in January is Sandman Volume 3, Dream Country. This trade includes issues 17 to 20 and was originally collected and published in 1990, part of my larger plan to revisit Vertigo titles that I read previously and actually finish the series this time around. This isn't my favorite volume of Sandman, but I think I'll enjoy it a bit more than the last one. Quote, the third volume of the Sandman collection is a series of four short comic book stories. In each of these otherwise unrelated stories, Morpheus serves only as a minor character. Here we meet the mother of Morpheus's son, find out what the cats dream about, and discover the true origin behind Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night Dream. The latter won a fantasy award for a best short story, the first time a comic book was given that honor. End quote. Another superhero related comic I want to read next month is Black AF, America's Sweetheart by Juanse Osefo, Jennifer Johnson, and Sho Moraes. This short graphic novel is the second installment of the Black AF series and was published in 2018 by Black Mass Studios and is part of my Black Comics TBR. Quote, Ellie Franklin is a 15-year-old girl living in rural Montana, and she just happens to be the most powerful person on the planet. In the aftermath of the world learning that only Black people have superpowers, Ellie makes her debut as the superhero Good Girl on a mission to help people and quell the fear of empowered blacks. When a super terrorist threatens to take away everything Ellie has worked towards, will donning a patriotic costume be enough for her to find acceptance? End quote. My next pick is part of both my ongoing anti-ableism TBR and my next A to Z of Queer Lit installment. Taking Turn, stories from HIV AIDS Care Unit 371 is about an important point in queer history and was published in 2017 by Penn State University Press. Quote, in 1994, at the height of the AIDS epidemic in the United States, M.K. Serwick took her first nursing job at Illinois' Masonic Medical Center in Chicago as part of the caregiving staff of HIV AIDS Care Unit 371. Taking turns pulls back the curtain on life in the ward. A shining example of excellence in the treatment in care of patients, Unit 371 was a community for thousands of patients and families affected by HIV and AIDS and the people who cared for them. This graphic novel combines Cerberic's memories with the oral histories of patients, family members, and staff. It depicts life and death in the ward, the way the unit affected and informed those who passed through it, and how many look back on their time there today. Zurich joined Unit 371 at a pitiful little time in the history of AIDS. Deaths from the syndrome in the Midwest peaked in 1995 and then dropped drastically in the following years with the release of antiretroviral protease inhibitors. This positive turn of events led to the decline in patient population and ultimately the closure of Unit 371. Zerwick's restrained, inviting drawing style and carefully considered narrative examines individual, institutional, and community response to the AIDS epidemic, as well as the role that art can play in the grieving process. Deeply personal, yet made up of many voices, this history of daily life in a unique AIDS care unit is an open, honest look at suffering, grief, and hope among a community of medical professionals and patients at the heart of the epidemic. End quote. And the final graphic novel I hope to read and review next month is Trinity, A Graphic History of the First Atomic Bomb by Jonathan Fetter Vorm. This will be a reread for me. I originally reviewed it before the Great Channel Reset, and it seems like a good book to keep on highlighting. Quote, Trinity depicts in vivid detail the dramatic history of the race to build and the decision to drop the first atomic bomb. This sweeping historical narrative traces the spark of invention from the laboratories of 19th century Europe to the massive industrial and scientific effort of the Manhattan Project. Along the way, Federer Vorm takes special care to explain the fundamental science of nuclear reactions with the clarity and accessibility that only a graphic novel can provide. Trinity transports the reader into the core of a nuclear reaction, into the splitting atoms themselves." End quote. 
And if that doesn't totally fill up my commute time, I am also going to try and read a couple books for compilation reviews I hope to post at some point in the future. The first of those will be Super Easy Breezy, namely a reread of the Bee and Puppy Cat trilogy by Natasha Allegri. This will be part of a compilation review of many cat-centered comics, which I am pretty excited for. Quote, the series revolves around B, an unemployed woman in her early 20s who encounters a mysterious creature named Puppy Cat. She adopts this apparent cat-dog hybrid, and together they go on a series of temporary jobs to pay off her monthly rent. These bizarre jobs take the duo across strange worlds out in space. End quote. Followed by Open Borders, The Science and Ethics of Immigration by Brian Kaplan and Zach Winersmith, published by First Second in 2019. It will unsurprisingly be part of a compilation of reviews about comics about immigration, largely in the so-called American context, having read and added to my TBR a number of non-fiction books that portray and tackle different facets of how the immigration and refugee process works in so-called America right now, or doesn't. I think talking about them in relation to each other and together will give a more fulsome view of the dangers of exclusion and possibilities of generosity. To be upfront with my bias, quote, American policymakers have long been locked in a heated battle over whether, how many, and what kind of immigrants to allow to live and work in the country. Those in favor of welcoming more immigrants often cite humanitarian reasons, while those in favor of more restrictive laws argue the need to protect native citizens. But economist Brian Kaplan adds a new, compelling perspective to the immigration debate. He argues that opening all borders could eliminate absolute poverty worldwide and usher in a booming worldwide economy, greatly benefiting humanity. With a clear and conversational tone, exhaustive research, and vibrant illustrations by Zach Wendersmith, Open Borders makes a case for unrestricted immigration, easy to follow, and hard to deny. End quote. And that's all I wrote. Seems like a lot, but so far the only reason I run behind on videos is because I lack the concentration to make the video and not because I fall behind on reading. I also have the next few days off. So, bye y'all, keep reading an organized and capitalist oppression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders, which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.